Today we honor the holy innocents who gave their lives for Christ. And in one sense, they are martyrs. Normally a martyr is someone who chooses to lay down their life for Christ. They witness by their martyrdom. In the case of these holy innocents, they were too young to choose for themselves, but they did die because of Christ. And as a result, they are honored as martyrs, and they probably have a very high degree of glory in heaven because they died in the place of Christ. So we saw in the gospel reading how King Herod wanted to destroy the, the, uh, the newborn Messiah, um, knowing that he would establish his kingdom. And so Herod was afraid of losing his own kingdom, which is ridiculous if you think about it. So here's Herod, who knows how old he is at this point, but, you know, a little child is born, it'll take quite a few years for that child to grow up and to establish his kingdom. So even if he were to establish a worldly kingdom, Herod will probably be long gone and dead by then. But he's so afraid that he wants to destroy the Christ child. And so he orders the slaughter of all the innocent children in and around Bethlehem, children up until the age of two. And it's, of course, it's a horrible thing. You know, imagine being the mother and the Roman soldiers come, or, or the soldiers of Herod, rather, come, and they probably pierced the children through either with a spear or with a sword, and it's a horrible way to die. And why did this happen? Because Herod feared for his kingdom for his security. He didn't want to change that. And, you know, very often on this day, we, we talk about the pro-life issue. So in other words, abortion. Is abortion not something very similar? Well, the answer is yes. So people fear that their lifestyle will be disrupted, that their kind of kingdom the world as they know it will be disrupted and so they have to get rid of this newborn child or this newly conceived child in the womb rather so of course it's very very unfortunate now now we would think king herod he he's a very cruel individual he's very selfish very self-centered he doesn't care about human beings he doesn't care about human life and that's pretty obvious. Now, it's true he was in many ways just a puppet king, so it's really the Romans who, who uh, governed Judea, so he was kind of a, a puppet king. Yes, he did have some authority. He could order things done, such as the slaughter of the innocents. But, you know, would we want such a king ruling over us? Would we want any worldly king ruling over us? And the answer is, is ideally no. But if there have been some good kings in the past. But of course, we have Christ, our eternal king, our heavenly king, who rules over us. So having a good king isn't necessarily bad. But would we want a king like Herod ruling over us? And if we consider what he did, hopefully we would answer no. But when it comes to politicians, well, politicians are far worse than King Herod. Because politicians, at least some politicians, those politicians who support abortion, they are slaughtering the innocents in the most sacred place, the womb of a woman. That's a sacred place. It's an inviolate place. You know, it's interesting when somebody, for example, kills a pregnant woman, they call it a double homicide. Two people are killed. But when you have an abortion, they call it a procedure. Uh-uh. You're killing an innocent human being. Now, granted, there is often pressure on women, so we can't always put the full blame on them, but um, it's, it's wrong. It's clearly wrong. And it's foolish of us to vote for any politician who's a mass murderer in this way or who supports abortion in other countries and uses our tax money to pay for abortion here in Canada and in other countries. I mean, think about it. You're voting for a mass murderer. You want a mass murderer to rule over you. This is, this is not good. Certainly not good. Now, recall on, um, on the day after Christmas, the 26th, it was the Feast of St. Stephen. And in the first reading, 
uh, I think it was from the Acts of the Apostle, it mentioned how St. Stephen was able to refute their arguments and he manifested signs and wonders and they stopped their ears or they blocked their ears. They didn't want to listen. And, and I mentioned how sometimes we don't want to listen to the voice of God. We don't want to follow God's will. And that's kind of reiterated in today's first reading from the first letter of John also. So we have to acknowledge that we are sinners and we have to have communion with Jesus. We cannot walk in darkness. We have to walk in the light. So being in the light means we acknowledge our sinfulness. We have to acknowledge our sinfulness. We cannot pretend that sin is not sin. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean it's okay. So wrong is wrong even if everybody's doing it and right is right even if nobody is doing it, as St. Augustine says. So we have to acknowledge the truth. We have to walk in the light. And I, I, I forgot to emphasize with St. Stephen that they didn't just stop their ears or, or block their ears. They killed the one who was proclaiming the things that they didn't want to hear. They killed St. Stephen. And in like manner, they want to kill God because God proclaims the truth. And so it's very convenient to not believe in God, to be an atheist, because then you don't have your conscience bothering you. Then you can justify whatever sin you want to commit. So they want to destroy God. So the Jewish leaders, they wanted to destroy Jesus Christ. They want God dead. People today, you see, atheists, they're not just people who don't believe in God. They're opposed to God. They're opposed to the idea of God. They don't want to believe. I, I, I quoted from that book, um, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. So it's top-notch scientists. They recognize all the signs, all the scientific evidence points to the fact that there is a creator, but they choose not to believe because that would mean having to change their lives. So people not only stop their ears, but they want to kill those who proclaim these things. They want to suppress them. They want to silence them. And they're willing to become violent. And, you know, for us who are pro-lifers, we have peaceful protests, you know, we, we have the March for Life in Ottawa. We are happy. We are joyful, even though it's so sad that so many innocent children are being killed in the womb. On the other hand, these pro-choicers, they are so angry. They are violent. And, you know, with, um, in the United States, with the recent decision regarding the Roe v. Wade con, uh, um, issue, you know, some of these pro-choicers have threatened the judges, threatened to kill them. And, uh, you know, they, they've made all kinds of death threats towards all kinds of pro-life people. This is, this is the extent to which they are willing to go. So people who don't want the light, people who don't want the truth, who want to make believe something else, well, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. It's your choice. Okay. But then why are you so angry when we proclaim the truth? And the reason they're so angry is because deep down, they know we are right, but they don't want us to be right. And so they want to suppress us. They want to silence us. They want to block their ears. And they're even willing to kill us. And this is just a sign that they are not in the light. They are in the darkness. And they are, if they are not in the light, they are not with God, which means they are on the side of evil. And evil is influencing them. And unfortunately, they do not realize it. And so you and I, we need to speak out. We need to enlighten people for their own sake and for the sake of everyone, and especially for the sake of the little ones, the innocent ones.